Hello and welcome. My name is Michael Mack and I'm very pleased to introduce Miranda July, Jay Benedicto and Jennifer Higgy for this Mac Live event, which has been planned alongside the release of a very special art book sculpture created over the course of the past two years by Miranda and Jay. I'll leave it to Miranda and Jay to elaborate the details of how their extraordinary relationship developed into this project. But suffice to say that when Miranda first told me about the idea, it felt simultaneously unique within her practice, while also speaking to a history within her artistic trajectory, which so deftly unpicks, challenges and invents new ways of thinking about collaboration. If you're familiar with Miranda's work, you'll understand how attuned she is to those subtle ways in which two people are able to work together. And these pieces she has made with Jay Benedicto speak to important questions about the nature of exchange, friendship, power, and the ability to find modes of communication from different sides of the world. This has been a truly cross-continental, multi-dimensional project, no more so than this event. It's 1am here in London as we record across four different time zones, including Canberra in Australia, Los Angeles and Manila in the Philippines. So without further ado, I'll give you over to the wonderful Miranda July in conversation with Jay Benedicto with Jennifer Higgy moderating. It's, it's really lovely to meet you both and, and I'm excited to talk to you about, you know, this really exciting project, Services. So maybe we could just leap in. Um, and start with, so what is the background of the story? Miranda, you were called and the conversation went from there. So perhaps you could um, tell us what, how it all began. Right. Um, well, I'll tell my point of view and then you can yeah. tell yours, Jay. <laughs> so mine is I'm sitting down to meet a friend at a cafe and it was supposed to be an ordinary meeting, but COVID literally like the pandemic hit really right over the course of that hour for us. Like we both got calls that our children's schools were closing and um, like we hugged at the beginning of our meeting and at the end we didn't, you know? So, and while I was waiting for the friend to arrive, I got a, a call on my phone like this. Um, and uh, from, I guess it said like unknown, I don't know what the unknown caller, whatever. Um, and it seemed to me that it was like a telemarketer or something like that. But I didn't, I didn't like hang up or say like, oh, you know, no, thank you or whatever. And I really can't exactly tell you why. Like, I guess it was your voice, Jay, and your your <laughs> spirit because it's not like I'm a particularly open. You know, I'm not always looking for someone to connect with or something but if you I mean if you remember I like answered all your questions um and what was your do you want to describe what your job was and what mm. from your point of view yes um well I I've only worked in the BPO industry and then um I helped myself to be an expert in and doing maybe sales. say for people what BPO is, in case anyone doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, a business process outsourcing um, kind of business, wherein um, people from all across the world will um, will ask for services from different mm -hmm. country, like in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And I think um, Coca Cola was the first BPO company who ask for services from the Philippines or who outsource their, their business in the Philippines. And then, yeah, um, I, I help myself to become an expert um, as a salesperson. Mm -hmm. Then at that time I was, I think I'm trying to become a, a team leader um, mm -hmm. in that publishing company. And then it just so happened I, I picked up Miranda's information mm -hmm. and I was really shocked when she told me that she's already connected with this big publishing company which I, I really you know because the first publishing company I worked with was also connected to that random house something like that and then 
Miranda was a different person. I mean, she's not the typical customer, but in she, if she is going to receive sales calls, she will hang up the phone or she will be irritated. Now she was really sweet and then go on with the conversation. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly we were able to find that connection. I think it started in asking if we have Instagram account. Mm-hmm. In our company, it's I, I was trying to be safe at that time because it's we are not allowed to ask for any personal information of our customer apart from um, offering services. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and we were that 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 was the time that we started working together. I mean, knowing each other, um, what uh what our likes and don't like, uh, mm-hmm. what can we, what I do for a living. Yeah, I think after you asked me all your, you know, questions for your job, I was like, okay, can I ask you some questions now? Yeah. And then I mm-hmm. remember I asked you what you like to do and we talked about karaoke and that you can sing and how old you were you know um just like different basic get to know you stuff but just the fact that you like were game you know that we were both kind of like laughing a little like we knew we were not we'd kind of gone off the script you know not not script but like the method yeah (laughs) But so, uh, Miranda, this was totally an intuitive response that you had. You hadn't planned to do anything like this, but it was when you heard Jay's voice, you suddenly thought, I want to have, I want to find out more about this person. Was that, was that how it happened? Yeah. You know, I do think it had something to do with like, picture you're just kind of stunned here. You're like, oh, my whole life, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen next. And then the mm-hmm. phone rings. You're just like, hello? Like, it's almost like, I'll just, like, I don't, like that, this was the next step was Jay. Mm. Like I, in another time, I might not, to be honest, I might not have been quite so open, but then it it also happened that, you know, our worlds were getting smaller and smaller. So it became Mm. more and more meaningful that we actually had a new friend very far away or not friend is taking it too far at this point we were still like yeah I trust you you know Jay very smartly was like let's make a contract and that impressed me just that you were I was just kind of glad that you were taking care of yourself and the relationship you know Mm. because it's also like it's like it's a lot of things that go into making a, a collaboration and it's not like you need um, to be the same, but you do need to have a certain kind of fairness, you know? Mm. And I think we were trying to find that mm. with a lot of difference. Yeah, absolutely. If people would, can really uh, relate or can see this book, I mean, they would understand um, a deeper story of my life. Mm. Do you want yeah. to speak about that? Because you can. <laughs> I don't want to cry. You on the spot. Well, after I graduated um, high school, I mm-hmm. I ran away. I mean, I left my family. I live alone. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to experience things that it shouldn't be um, mm-hmm. having this um, nasty intercourse with person that I really don't like, eating foods that that is only for um, pigs or animals. I mean, that experience and that portrait, the reason why I mentioned it, it was my favorite the one um, me dying mm-hmm. and then the one begging, it's because it will really talk a lot about myself. And mm-hmm. every time I see that, it, it makes me really proud. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, I hope, I'm hoping that the, the, the people who will um, get a copy of this will really be inspired. 
I mean, they will understand that it's not only happening in the Philippines, it's happening all across the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting. I think we, in coming from really different circumstances, shared a certain, um, I mean, I can't emphasize enough, really different circumstances, but we both did do sex work when we were younger. And there was a kind of frankness about mm. that and and about pain mm. really that um that we were able to have and I think that's the thing that in any work in any museum in any context like to be able to get that pain it, with no words you know just with your your body in your space um, and not in a direct way exactly you know not um it's not like super graphic you know is is like there's a poetry to it that is the most powerful thing I think that that you did and that was just a it gets there's just the the moment in your life you know that where that was possible you know um, but you also sent me like beautiful, fun, funny pictures of you and all your friends, like all dressed, like dolled up. And yeah. you would send me like karaoke videos of you like really glammed up singing karaoke. So like there was a lot of like joy and humor and vibrancy too. It wasn't just like, you mm. know, sad Carrie Ann's tale, you know, it was, it was, I was also like really impressed that you had a community and friends and um, yeah. Yeah. And Jennifer, I think um, when we were doing this project, um, I was kind of hesitant, scared, um, or feel horrible if I'm going to do that. It's because it's really a deeper story of my life where I will be ashamed of it. But mm -hmm. at some point, with um, having a conversation with Miranda inspiring me, I think um, I realized that I have to do it because I have to face my fear. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that I can be ashamed of, but something that I can be proud of, of as to what I have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is, I'm remembering now, like, in some of our phone conversations, uh, a sort of like moving point of connection is my child is trans um, and you're a trans woman. And there was this, I mean, I had moments when you would talk about your childhood and, and, um, and how that felt growing up, you know, trans. And here I have, you know, this, assigned male at birth dress wearing trans child you know and, and so it's like very complex what you know we're two adult peers but I also at times really felt so like I wish I could take care of you I wish I could go back in time and and mm -hmm. take care of that child who was you know being so free in moments and then punished you know I think um so it wasn't it was a, a real um a lot of different ways both of us were mm. kind of yeah just um, kind of emotionally deep in it mm. yeah and so in a, in a way that that's the that's what you both gained from this um meeting it was you know there were the questions that you asked you know to respond to but the deeper level is it's a beautiful connection about understanding people from different parts of the world and different ways of being. And, and I think it's in that sense, it's a very compassionate project. Yeah. So M Miranda, how, how long did it take you to form this idea, develop this idea of collaborating with Jay on this artwork and, and this Leporello? Yeah. I mean, it kind of unfolded in real time, like, you know, I, I made it up and I remember I initially said, 
um, maybe we give each other assignments and you were mm -hmm. like, I don't need to give them to you. <laughs> and then I was like, okay. So that, you know, it's like, it was a collaboration in the sense that like I went forward where Jay was open and I, you know, I, there was, um, it always felt kind of like I put something out, like an open mm -hmm. opening and I, I never knew what was going to come back. So for example, the very first assignment, um, and I, I should say a, just a little background, like there was a context like the um, this magazine, Süddeutsche Zeitung magazine, mm. which is the it's the German, I don't know, German New York Times kind of. Um, and every November they have an artist create one edition um, and do a project. So I didn't mm. know if this would be that, right? You know, I mean, it's a it's many pages and it's. Um, but I, but I was up front, like, I didn't want to, I brought that up right away, right, Jay, I didn't want to um, not include in, like, the knowledge that, like, I, if this worked out, I would be wanting it to be public in this way, and, um, and, and, I mean, Jay's, like, pretty savvy, you know, like, mm. it's not like that was, like, you couldn't get your head around that or something, like, you had a lot of smart questions and um but the first assignment i i asked you to bow down to something you loved love which is sleeping and money yeah and jay sent a picture which i then later altered um bowing down hmm. to money right. um, which was so and and he she also wrote this Practically speaking, living alone, supporting myself alone, and for 13 years that I was on and off, not with my family, I just love money from the mm. cheapest penny to the highest bill, because without it, I cannot live anymore, especially right now where I don't have no one and can't easily trust anyone. Maybe it's true that money can make the world go round. I'm not proud of it, but I have to live with it, which I mm. just thought was like kind of a perfect beginning mm. like it's just really honest like um and also like it just kind of cut through like oh yeah like if you don't have money bowing down to all sorts mm. of other things isn't really possible you know like mm. you just and mm. and um I, anyways I thought it was and then every single time whatever kind of boring prompt I gave Jay Jay came back with something really um, like powerful and mm. took each each assignment. Can we tell just a few more of them? Yeah, that um, would be really great to walk through a few of them. And, and jump in, Jay, and tell me like, so you remember this one I asked because we were all starting to learn about wearing masks and stuff. I said, can you make a mask mm. um, with just whatever you have around? Um, mm. And uh, I remember you sent me a picture because I would kind of bug you. I'd be like, how's it going with the mask? Um, and uh, and you showed me a picture of sort of like some crash on your desk, which is that you were thinking of using and that you were working on it. And then you sent this picture, mm -hmm. which I thought was just yeah. so, just kind of like, Superhero, alien, gas mask. Um, do you want to say anything about it? Do you remember making it? Yeah, I think it was uh, inspired by uh, superheroes. Like uh, Spider-Man and then I think one of the movies as well. And I was watching at that time. So it was just like a... Um, a combination of a futuristic superhero, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And and Jay was making art something that you'd done before. Um, you know, was was is art something that you've been interested in for a long time? Or was this something new for you to be creating sculptures in a sense? Well, art is also something I love. Mm -hmm. There are just... Um, Maybe drawing. I love looking at them, but 
I don't know how to draw. Mm -hmm. So there are part of um, in the art world where I like and I don't like, mm -hmm. but it really gives me meaning. Mm -hmm. So that that's why I am also being inspired to do the the assignments with Miranda. Yeah. And and a lot of the the responses that you gave to Miranda's requests were a very performative. You know, you seem very comfortable performing. Is is that something that you've done before? I I actually dream to be an artist. I mean, yeah. uh, working with different uh, comedians, uh, drama actors, and actresses, um, as if like I am the that person begging for love, begging for something, and people will just tap down on me. So mm. I would like to be that character. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe we can talk through a few more of the exercises that um, that you two right. create. Yeah, I wanted to at least get into this. So I sometimes to give just us like a common starting point visually, I would, mm -hmm. do you remember when I sent these photographs by Arthur Tress. Do you know who that is, Jennifer? I can't no. tell how obscure this. I think this person's pretty obscure. It's a book that um, I think my parents had when I was a child. It's Arthur Tress, Dream Collector is the name of the book. And he's this guy who had children and sometimes adults act out their dreams. And they're just these black and white photographs. And they were really intense to me as a child. And I've always... I still look at them and still think they're interesting. And so I I sent some of them to Jay to look at and think about. And then I said, could you act out a dream? And uh, at this point, and this is what I mean by like, you know, that could be nothing, right? That assignment is could, could be so boring. And um, I mean, basically you wrote back about, um, sort of a like a recurring rape dream would you put it that way um and and then you sent um and then also a dream of of um being being suicidal um or dying and uh and so um these are the images that had to do with that um so this is one uh, which I think is quite incredible. This um, this wolf is something that I that was on Jay's Facebook. There was a period of time where we kind of lost touch. Jay uh, couldn't find her phone, lost her phone, um, mm. and I was kind of left like looking for her and and looking mm. at her Facebook page a lot. And on the Facebook page, there was a a wolf and a unicorn, um, and this sentence. It said, um, sort of like, sometimes I'm dominant, sometimes I'm submissive, um, mm -hmm. something like that. Do you remember that? I don't yeah. know. And so when you said this, I mm -hmm. added the wolf, and I, but I just, I don't know, I think it's a really beautiful image. And, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I thought this, there's something about this line. Um, and then, yeah. Um, there was also a unicorn, and so you sent another image of you, you like really amazingly made this, like you lying dead with your mouth foaming, and you used shampoo, I think, um, and I added the unicorn, which kind of weirdly mapped onto your body in this amazing way, like this is Jay's armpit, but also the neck of the unicorn I um and these were those are like two of the pieces that I'm most proud of our mm. collaboration and there's some I feel like there's something happened there where we kind of crossed over mm. into like a little world <laughs> it, it this assignment is actually one of my favorite because um it seems like I am that portrait or painting wherein I'm looking at that person who's looking at that painting and mm -hmm. looking at um, their reaction 
it's just give me some so much power, so much pain. Mm. Kinda uh like that feeling. So it, it really it, it made me something different. Mm. And Miranda, what was it that shaped your questions to Jay? Had you had long conversations with her before you came up with your questions or were they quite spontaneous? I mean, we talked a bit on the phone a few mm. times, but so there was a little bit of just coming mm. out of our relationship. But, you know, some of it was me at the, you know, it's like, it's my work too, or it's my portrait too, in a way, based on where I was, you know, so I guess I was, you know, what do you, like, in that time, it makes so much sense to me that, like, dreams, I was also writing my dreams down every morning, and, mm -hmm. um, and I think we were all in a really internal place, so, um, I don't, yeah, just sort of, and also, I think I was looking to go deeper, which isn't that easy with like a stranger mm -hmm. far away. You know, it's like you leave the door open, like if you want, you know, and Jay would like, yeah, just, you know, absolutely commit. And, and just like, the, I mean, as a director and actor, like setting it all up, putting the camera there, like I imagine there were quite a few takes before you found like the one you liked, you know, and I just admired that too, that you were like, um, doing that work, you know, putting mm -hmm. the care into it, um, was really like, I think I got like, you've kind of like sat up a little taller from it, but I did too. You know, each time one came back, I'd be like, you know, trying to show people like, this is happening. This is really important. Yeah. I mean, Jay, how did you feel about um, Miranda sort of reaching out and, and asking you to do these, you know, if you were interested in, in participating in an art project? Did that, was that surprising to you? How did, how did you feel about her request? I, I, I felt being honored because mm -hmm. of the situation that, that I, I'm, um, experiencing at that time and with my background experience it was really bad I mean Miranda was just like an angel <laughs> who was brought to me because it changes the way um um who who am I in the society mm -hmm. who am I to my family um and the the, the people who who knows my background Mm. So in this project, it gives me a, sh a light mm. and give me a different experience as that I can do better than what I'm currently doing, something mm. like that. And Miranda was really that bridge mm. who helped me um, go this far. Mm. And, and how long did the project go for? How long were you in contact with each other and and having this back and forward with images and questions. Well, so the magazine, there was like a an automatic cutoff point because the magazine was going to press. So that body of work ended, but we actually kept going. And to my mind, we're, st we're still going. Like I, it kind of depends on our life, but, um, and I've been like trying to finish a novel. So a little mm -hmm. bit out of contact um but i never thought that we were done because for one thing we have all the work you know that we made after mm. this um and you kept going like i kept giving you assignments and your life kept changing and mm. so those assignments reflect you know where you were living what um and then uh and the magazine came out and then um and you guys haven't seen this. I think I'm the only one who has it. Wow. Uh, then the idea, um, the the newspaper suggested an artist mm -hmm. edition. Um, they they quite liked the project, and they said if one existed, mm -hmm. we would want it. You know, mm -hmm. and I hadn't I hadn't ever done that. Um, but I was already in conversation with Mac, um, with Michael Mac, and 
a, just a fan of their beautiful, beautiful books. And, um, and so I, it was very organic to talk to him mm. about it. And, um, this might be the, like, uh, it, it's quite something. It's, wow. um, it's big. Uh, so here's the box, Jay. <laughs> I, wow. I really tried to pick colors that you would think were pretty. This is like this opalescent pink. Yeah, it's got a beautiful but sheen. There was supposed to also be a museum show with the magazine, but because of COVID, that couldn't happen. And um, I didn't like how this is cool, but it's it's disposable. You know, I mean, most of them were probably thrown out. And mm. so the fact that this is so beautifully made, mm. um, and each of these things is like inset. It comes with four prints. So you actually, and to me, this is like one big reason to buy it. Like you get loose mm. these prints. Mm. <laughs> I sound mm -hmm. like I'm like just selling my wares now, you know. Uh, one really cool thing about the prints that we did um, is the things that I added are mm. glued on. So this mm. is like a collage element. Um, mm. You can kind of see it's a different texture. Mm. which I yeah. think is like, takes it to the next level. You'll have these. I'm so curious okay. what you'll do. And okay, just one more. Um, uh, this yeah. one, so this too is, is mm. cut out and glued on. This mm. one is, this was also on your Facebook. And I was sure. just like, trying to this a little bit reflected the fact that I lost contact with you and then when we got back in contact mm -hmm. um I asked you to do this pose mm -hmm. and I put, I put the stuff on it and it was I mean we also you know we got into fights like there was mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that happened mm -hmm. that would happen in any yeah. new relationship but like it wasn't always like we I think we gained trust over time Sure. So, Jay, um, how do you feel now when you see, you know, this incredible body of work, you know, in this very beautiful presentation? And does it inspire you to keep being an artist and to keep exploring your life in these different ways? I am. I'm, I'm, in fact, I am very proud. I mean, I think it's the only word that, um, that can describe how I feel right now. Mm. I mean, it will not happen if it's not because of Miranda and mm. yeah I, I feel different mm. yeah I feel a different person I will say just to sort of finish the story part of it uh, I remember when I sent it I think I sent it all to you as like a pdf or maybe it was the magazine I can't remember but I was so nervous because first of all I had never really shown today that I was doing stuff to some of the pictures, you know? Um, I just, I don't know, I was just trying to like feel free and not worry too much. <laughs> no. But that, it also felt like that could not feel good. I'm not sure. Um, and just the whole thing, like our, because part of the work is also our text exchanges, but I also, those aren't completely real. Like I edited and, you know, I made it work for mm -hmm. the story. And obviously Jay was going to know that, you know? And, yeah. and um, so it's like this huge leap where I suddenly represented mm -hmm. us in a kind of not totally fictional, but like a whole thing. And I, I remember literally like just walking around scared mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and, and uh, I don't know. And then, yeah, and then we talked and, um, yeah, not to, I don't need um, you to say any more nice things, but just to say that I was so relieved. Um, and I think it was, in a way, that was the moment where, like, that's actually why we kept going making things was because it was suddenly like, oh, this is mm. what we're doing. Like now we have like a mutual understanding. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And 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 what determined the the final format of the project, putting it in this beautiful sort of work that unfolds in a way rather than a right. book. Right. So a leporello, which mm. that my computer doesn't recognize as a word, so I assume <laughs> not many people know it. It's an accordion fold. The idea was that you that anyone who had this, and there's only 25 that will ever exist, could fold it out and display it and that it could be like a, an exhibition. So all the museums mm. are closed, but you could make mm. your own museum show and that this work would kind of be presented in that way. Not So not really a book, although it, it can function mm. like a book. Um, and it was a lot of back and forth with um, Mac and, uh, and um, Bookworks and, and um, and I had never done something quite like this. A lot of paper samples and making little dummies. Um, I worked with a designer who I've worked with before, um, Chris Benson, and uh, yeah, moving the images around. Yeah, so it, um, you know, after you were done, Jay, I did a lot of um, just work on making this like a beautiful object, um, which yeah. was fun. I mean, I loved it. Yeah. And were there artists who particularly inspired you, Miranda, in terms of your approach to this project? Um, yeah. I mean, I talked with um, my friend Harold Fletcher, who's a, um, I don't know if you know his work, but he, he teaches the art and social practice program, mm -hmm. like kind of invented that as a teachable mm -hmm. arts program at, at PSU. Um, and and we just talked a little, like, I, I wanted to get his take initially on, like, because we've also done projects together and these sort of unusual collaborations and where there's, um, like, this idea that you just, you shouldn't shy away from things mm. that have, like, tricky power dynamics, potentially, mm. but that, that has to be part of the work, you know? Um, but how do you do that and how do you discuss these things and be up front and so he was a great person just to talk to and I guess um you know it's funny another person who who did this was uh Sophie Cal um who did this magazine edition and she's done you know a lot, she's someone I've an artist I've loved my whole life who's um you know each project is very different and often working with um people she just meets very organically. So yeah, those are two reference points. Yeah. And and chance encounters have been a sort of recurring theme through your work in various ways. I was thinking about like the future starts here. And um so you know when you met an Uber driver and you struck up a conversation and then you know a friendship developed from that. And so I I do love the way that you break down these boundaries that we tend to often have in life about who we speak to and who we don't speak to and and you open up the world and I think that's a very beautiful gesture in a way. Right. I know it's funny. I feel like it gives the impression that I'm this very like like the kind of person who likes to hug a lot, which I'm not. Um, <laughs> it's it's really so unusual and so special when it happens. And it's a yeah. little like falling in love or something. Like you don't see it coming. Mm. You're nervous. Mm. And then there's this like unexpected mm. intimacy um, that kind of crosses the normal social boundaries. And I think yeah. that's that's what I love about it is that kind of um, like we both know that this falls outside of of what we usually do so it's mm. actually that it is very rare that mm. um even though yes i mean over a long life now i can look back and be like oh gosh i was doing this when i was a teenager you know um it's accumulated to the point where it seems like a habit but no more so than falling in love you know i probably had as many um people i collaborated with as you know romantic partners it's 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 still mm. very um very rare yeah yeah 
Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's, um, yeah, it's a beautiful gesture about, you know, the sense of not being alone in the world, especially during this pandemic, when everyone has been so alone that you've been sort of reaching out to each other. But have you ever met in the flesh? Or has that still been impossible? Yeah, not even close. No, <laughs> I do believe. I keep thinking like, well, we have to finish that, like the body of work and then have a book like a book that there's more than 25 copies of and mm. then a show and then yeah. for the show like we'll fly you to where the show is or maybe the show's where you are and we'll fly to you and uh and then we'll meet <laughs> mm. yeah that'll be that'll be quite a meeting when you've been just used to sort of you know talking on zoom or on the phone that'll be <laughs> interesting yeah yeah yeah, wonderful. Um, so, Jay, I'm I'm excited to meet you, and it's it's really wonderful to see this work that you've been doing, and uh, I look forward to seeing where it goes, where it you know goes from here. But it's it's great to hear it's an ongoing conversation. I, yeah. I love it that we're in three different parts of the globe and we're talking today. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah really thank you so much, Jennifer, for doing this. Thank you very much for joining us for this Mac Live event. Service is available as a limited edition of 25 handmade copies, and you can find more detail on our website at macbooks.co.uk. Finally, I'd like to thank our dazzling speakers, Miranda, Jay and Jennifer, for such a fascinating and revelatory conversation about this unique collaboration and the resulting object.